Diane, love is here. Let these trouble days be done. I tell you, come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these trouble days be done. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Chris from Australia. All right. Quesh, thank you. Bird by nature, beautiful. Mind elevation boxing. I love that. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is Motivation Monday. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and I want to welcome each and every one of you to our Motivation Monday program today. In North Carolina, it's raining, 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 and we may have to consider building an ark. I mean, it's amazing how much rain is coming down. Today, uh, our topic, two things I want to make announcements. Number one, if you don't have a copy of the 12 Universal Laws of Success, to be sure to get one. And number two, let me see something. Hold a second. Let me just change my, uh, let's do this here. Uh, I'm going to do something differently. We're doing uh, Instagram and we're doing uh, YouTube at the same time. There we go. So uh, I want to kind of correct a little thing. Great. Anyway, our topic for today is, of course, based on our book. And those of you, as we're going into this final part of the year, it's really important to use the tools, your tools for success. And many of the tools are in this book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. Also, our home study course. I know Chris has our home study course and many of you others have our home study course. Good morning, good morning. No earphones today. You can hear me though. <laughs> I got my new phone. And so I don't need the headphones today. So the point is that uh, the home study course gives you a, a powerful tool to be able to do the success work that you need to do on your pace, on your time. The workbook gives you a way to write down a lot of the things that we talk about today so that you'll be able to put these things into action. Hey, Sade, Quentin, thanks so much for joining us. So today's topic with those two things, the book and the home study course. And so for all of you who listen or watch later, get it. It will transform your life. Today, I want to think a bit about your power of imagination. And the reason I wanted to look at that is because so often on our success journeys, we get so involved with what we see in the immediate, in our immediate presence that we don't see beyond to the dreams and to the goals that we have. We often say we can't see the forest for the trees. Uh, we often say uh, we're so busy uh, uh, fighting alligators that we don't drain the swamp. And your imagination is a powerful tool that can literally drag you and pull you along to the realization of the life you desire to live. From our 12 affirmation poster, Affirmation number five, and it says this, I constantly visualize my purpose, seeing it clearly in my mind. I constantly visualize my purpose, seeing it clearly in my mind. So the power of visualization and imagination is this. If you can create a vision in your mind's eye, if you can see it, you can be it. Many times when we, if you think back on the successes that you've had in your life, the greatest things, your greatest victories, the things that you did that you're most proud of are the result of being able to see it exactly the way you wanted it to be. I was watching the, uh, the um, Olympic trials last night of the world championship for the gymnasts. And uh, I, I remember listening to one of the gymnasts saying that, she saw herself on the podium. As a matter of fact, there was one of the gymnasts that said she had been on the Steve Harvey, Harvey show when she was maybe 10 years old. And she visualized herself being in the 2024 Olympics. And she's on her way there. And so this power of visualization gives you the ability to put spiritual vibration, uh, emotional vibration into something you want to be doing half. The more you can see it, the more attention you give to it. 
you know, you have what you call intention and attention. Intention is what you would like to be, what you would like to do, what you would like to have. Attention is what you give your power to. So you may have the intention of being wealthy, but if you don't give attention to the things that you need to do to become wealthy, chances are you will not accomplish it. And so this power of imagination is, a, is one of your most powerful tools to create the life of your dreams. And it said this, imagination is your power to form mental images of something not present to the senses. And I'm reading from page 80 and 81 of the 12 Universal Laws of Success. Your imagination is your power to form mental images of something not present to the senses. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge for knowledge is limited. Whereas imagination embraces the whole world, stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution. And so your imagination is really the connecting link between your own human consciousness and the universal consciousness, the good mind, the God mind, the infinite mind. And so through your imagination, you are able to take the formless energy. In other words, everything in existence has a energy equivalent. E equals MC squared from the theory of relativity, energy, which is vibration, equals manifestation, mass, times the speed of light squared. So what this is saying conceptually is that everything that happens in your life is a result of vibrations that are the result of your deep desire. If you really want something, and one of the most powerful manifestations of your vibration is your deep desire. We often tell the story of, uh, say, what is deep desire? Uh, one of the great teachers said he had a student and the student could not grasp could not grasp what he meant when he said deep desire. And so he took the student out into the water. And when he was about chest high, he held the student, pulled him on the water and he held him there for 30 seconds, for 60 seconds. And the student started squirming and moving because he, he wanted to breathe, he wanted to breathe. And finally, just as the student was be about to that point of like no return, he pulled the student up and the student gasped that air. And so, he was saying that your desire, your deep desire must be as profound, as strong, as powerful as your desire to breathe. If you've ever done any snorkeling, when you go under, you've been done some underwater swimming, you get down a certain point, boy, you want to breathe so badly. So your desire has got to be that strong. And your imagination is the blueprint on which your desire can focus. So we have two types of imagination. We have synthetic imagination and we have creative imagination. Synthetic imagination is where you literally take things that exist, ideas, and plans, and you put them together in a new combination. You know, there was a great war many years ago between Thomas Edison and uh, the fellow who invented the uh, Mm, hold on a second. And Tesla. Tesla. Tesla was an inventor. He actually worked for Thomas Edison at one point. And it is said they fell out because Tesla's process was to imagine, to use what you might call creative imagination, where he would visualize the particular device he was trying to invent in his imagination. And then in his reality, he simply determined the way to manifest what he already saw in his mind. That's creative imagination. Edison was more synthetic imagination, trial and error. Do this, do that, do the other. And so Edison and Tesla had completely different motors, methods of operation. It is said that uh, Edison told Tesla that he would give him $50,000 if he could solve certain, a certain technical problem. And uh, Tesla solved it within a few weeks and Edison wouldn't pay him. So they parted ways. But anyway, synthetic imagination is good in a sense that it brings about the, the 
the confluence, the, the bringing together of di diverse ideas and techniques to form something new, literally, literally a synthesis. But creative imagination is where you literally put yourself in a rest state and know in your mind that there's a solution possible and ask the good mind, the infinite mind to bring that solution to your consciousness. So that's a powerful tool. So how do you expand your creative imagination? Number one, reading is critical. Leaders are readers. Nearly everyone you talk to about how they became successful, how they were able to overcome incredible challenges, they'll tell you they read. They read a book a month, a book a week. Reading stimulates your mind because it gives you things that were not there before. Reading is a process by which great minds develop incredible minds. A daily reading program is a powerful tool that can expand the scope of your thoughts and enhance your powers of imagination. You know, you can read about things you've never seen before. You can read about things you did not know existed. And through reading, you're able to expand your consciousness of these things. Number two, to practice your imagination skills. You see, imagination is a skill. Our company is called the Life Skill Institute. And the reason is we have a, a basic belief that living is a skill and that anything you need to know to have a more prosperous, a more joyful life, a more abundant life, you can learn. And so when you practice your imagination skills, you literally sit in what we call a meditative state. You see, imagination is a, is a process of connecting to your subconscious, through your subconscious, to your superconscious mind. And so it's really about how do I open the channels in my imagination so that ideas that I did not know existed can flow into my mind. You know, there's a, 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 a spiritual principle, seek and you shall find, ask and it shall be answered, knock and it shall be open. So the moment you start on the journey process, the process to be more, to see more, to do more. And when you can put yourself into a meditative state. Now, I, I don't, you don't have to go out and take courses in meditation. A simple state of relaxation of just sitting, resting your mind, resting your body, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath and getting a nice flow going. And then attempting to visualize that that you want to see. You may practice with familiar things, but then you can ask beyond the familiar things so that the infinite consciousness can come into your mind. You know, creative people are able to connect. You say, how did you write that song? What were you thinking when you painted that? And most creative people will say that I let my mind fly. I let my consciousness just ride the waves. So practice your imagination skills on a daily basis. Number two, the, number three, to have the goals you want to achieve clearly in your mind. So anything that you want to be doing, have. So for example, you want to have wealth. Most of us want, need, want some money. We would, like to lead, we would like to live a prosperous life. Great. Mm -hmm. Visualize in your imagination what that means. How the house looks that you want to live in. How the family array that you have that you want to experience. The car you want to drive. Maybe visualize and feel the feeling that you have when you receive whatever the awards are that are commensurate with that which you're seeking. That the more that you, the more spiritual vibration, the more desire, the more sensory relationship that you can establish with your goals, the more powerful you become to realize. You see, when you establish that vibrational relationship, we often say, if your why is big enough, don't worry about the how. So if your level of desire is consistent, I mean, not a desire today, a different desire tomorrow, but where you're seeking it with no, where, where your mantra is only success, failure is not an option. Everything that does not go the way you want it to go is a lesson to help you get better. When you can see that clearly in your mind, you give yourself a vibrational relationship with your goals, which then creates whatever you recognize in your thoughts, you energize in your feelings. 
whatever you energize in your feelings, you realize in your life. So imagination gives you the ability to recognize. Feeling nature gives you the ability to energize. And then you manifest in your life. That's the power of manifestation. Number four. Develop your powers of concentration. If you cannot concentrate, and concentration is a learned skill, it is a process by which you focus your attention on a particular thought, a particular outcome over a particular period of time. See, concentration is like, um, you know, when you have a magnifying glass and you have the sun outside, well, we don't have sun today, but on a sunny day, you can use a magnifying glass to concentrate the energy of the sun and focus that energy onto a piece of paper and set it on fire. And so when you have that ability to concentrate, that requires your self-discipline and it requires your focus. So you have to be able to take control of your mind, your thoughts, your emotions in such strength or degree that everything is under your control. That all you can think about is that that you desire. When you have concentration on that level, you're unstoppable. And then finally, control your moods and emotions. You see, your emotions are a lot like a knife. A knife can be used to carve a beautiful statue. Or it can be used to kill a human being. And so your emotions have that same power that you can use your emotions in positive ways to create things that you've never seen before, but that you desire to experience. You don't have to have tasted of joy and abundance. You know, hey, someone once said, I know when I get it. <laughs> but what helps you get it is to visualize it in your mind and to feel it in your heart. Your moods and emotions are vehicles that can be used against you. Take an emotion like anger. So many young people you see get caught up in anger. You read stories about people who are on their way to great success. Many of your athletes, people who are in the public eye, get caught up in anger. Punching somebody out takes control, can throw their entire career off. Think about Will Smith, the Academy Awards. He wins an Academy Award, and what is the world focusing on? The fact that he went up and slapped Chris Rock, his inability to handle his anger. And so in order for you to accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish, you must control your moods, you must control your, emotes, your emotions. So let us review these five steps to help you expand your imagination and wrap it up today. Number one, expand your mind by reading. Number two, practice your imagination skills so that you become good at it. Number three, have a clear vision of your goals and the, your purpose, that that you want to realize, the life you want to live. Number four, develop your powers of concentration. Take control of your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, your habits, your relationships, so they work for you. And finally, number five, to control your moods and your emotions using your moods and your emotions as fire in your belly to strengthen your desire to be what you want to be, to do what you want to do, and to have whatever you want to have. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. What you say, Bay Bay from Mississippi. Kyra, thank you so much. All right, Cheryl Lamore, thank you. Monte, thank you so much. And all of you who are with us today, thanks for sharing. Um, please share this broadcast with at least two other people, at least three other people, and write some comments. We'd love to get your feedback on how you are using the, the skills for success, the techniques for success, the laws for success to help you be whatever you want to be, help you do whatever you want to do, and help you have whatever you desire, always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. Be sure to go to our website, www.herbertharris.com. Get your copy of the 12 Universal Laws of Success and get our home study course to help you close out strong to make this your year for outrageous success. So it is.